A new world order can emerge. A new era. A new world order. It is a big idea. A new world order. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And the hope that each of us has to build a new world order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think the new world order is emerging. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities. And there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. That in fact we're all going to have to give up a little bit of our sovereignty in order to make the world work. Already there are powerful forces at work that threaten to destroy all of our hopes and efforts to erect an enduring structure of global cooperation. Are you optimistic a global system can happen it, from what it, we've heard so far? It, it, it could happen and in fact it's in the work. And for the international order that we have worked for generations to build. Ordinary men and women are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. Ordinary men and women are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. That order and progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all-powerful sovereign. That order and progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all-powerful sovereign. In 1943, the following directive was issued from party headquarters to all communists in the United States. It read, when certain obstructionists become too irritating, label them after suitable buildups as fascist or Nazi or anti-Semitic and use the prestige of anti-fascist and tolerance organizations to discredit them. In the public mind, constantly associate those who oppose us with those names which already have a bad smell. The association will, after enough repetition, become fact in the public mind.